Welcome to the show. Let's look, let's start by looking at the latest cases of coronavirus, adding on to our New Year's special. And as of yesterday, the cases are now up on the rise. We are now close. We're now getting close to thirty thousand. I mean, now we're now in the case. We're now up to twenty-nine thousand five hundred forty-two. None have recovered. Not recovered, and we're getting close to 550 deaths. Harris County. Dallas County is getting close to 2,000. Bexar County is getting close to 120. Charing County is under 150. In the city of Texas, we're now up to 1.77 million, 20,000 deaths statewide. And uh, total cases in the United States, 20 million. <laughs> And uh, 346, getting close to 350 deaths here. Worldwide, 43.47.3 have recovered, and, and 1.83 million have recovered, and 1.83 deaths, 84 million. So, what can be done about this? If you haven't got your vaccine, there's still time to get that vaccine out. There's still time to get that vaccine. But now we've learned of another vaccine. This time there is a third vaccine made by Johnson & Johnson. So we got the one from Pfizer. We got the one from the other company. And we also got the one from... And this, this time's the one from... Uh, Johnson & Johnson. The baby powder guys. Now before we get into that thing, I, I always to remind people, you guys... What you guys need to do is make sure that you guys wear masks at all times. No ifs and buts or excuses unless you have a medical condition. If you have a medical condition, have a t-shirt on that says, I have a medical condition, I cannot wear a mask. Or just say, I, I cannot wear a mask because of medical condition. That way they'll know. And, uh, and all stores mandate that you start wearing masks period. All stores, grocery stores, pet stores, video, electronic stores, restaurants, they all mandate you start wearing masks even if you're at work. If you have medical conditions, same thing. Just let them know and then they'll take care of it. Just let the manager know. So is this thing. It has to be within six feet, six feet or left. Six feet or above. just has to be within six feet. You can't be close than six feet, otherwise you'll attract the virus. Masks, very, very important. Like I said, it helps reduce the spread. It helps reduce the spread. And now a few days ago, we learned that two people are now, three people are now being tested for COVID-19. And let's see what I have here. We have Lance Stewart, the biggest YouTuber ever, and Julius Summer. And, uh, and Lance's grandma, three people from, three people in Lance's family have tested positive for the virus. If you don't know what's been going on, but if you want to get updates, we'll give you updates ever since the, uh, we'll give you updates. But, uh, first let's check in, let's check in the other counties. The close to 100,000 from El Paso, Travis County at 50, the lowest ever here is in Brazos. This has been reported since one day ago from the New York Times. And the New York Times does a very, very good job with this. Does like a very, very good job and uh, they do like a lot of they do like a lot of good things. Now let's talk about the third vaccine that's being put that's going to be put in place as far as we know. This was just almost about a week. This is just about days before Christmas. Johnson News announced its first phase three of a COVID-19 vaccine ensemble is fully enrolled. So this is from their website from the company. 
It says in part, a tree of data from the assembled trials currently anticipated to be available by the end of January 21 by the end of this month. However, this trial is dependent on the disease events and time and approximate. If the is if the data indicate that the vaccine is safe and effective, the company expects to submit an emergency use authorization allocation to the US to the FDA in February next month. Other health regulatory applications around the world will be made parallel. It continues to develop the COVID nineteen vaccine to candidate in accordance with high standards and uh, scientific principles. So, so we end of this month, going into February, we will know about that third vaccine. But what are the side effects of that third vaccine? Well, mild side effects, injection site, pain, tiredness, headache, and headache. Those are the side effects. So now we have the three vaccines that being put in place. If you're concerned about which one to go for, just don't go for all three because the side effects will just be enormous. So I would recommend choose what you get in uh, the three vaccine shots. I mean, that's like a total of like six shots from like each like each vaccine. We don't probably need people getting as many shots as possible. Right, we're going to take a break here. Coming up, look back in 2020 and all the stories and all the stories we've done and all the stories that uh, all the news people have done and as far as I've done. Stay with us. Look, you guys, 2020 has been a rough year because of this virus. And uh, we're going we're gonna to break this down for you in case you guys have missed it. Here's Ray Chandler. Everybody behind me, and so many more that could not be with us here today, are dedicated in this unified effort, and we will beat it. Four days later, Nueces County Judge Barbara Canales issued a stay-at-home order, closing nursing homes to visitors, forcing the restaurant industry into takeout mode, and shutting down non-essential businesses. We're really just doing the only thing that any of us can do, and is that's just taking this on a day-by-day -day basis. In April, Governor Greg Abbott issued a statewide stay-at-home order. Later that month, the Coastal Bend's first COVID-19-related death in Claiborne County. A week later, New Oasis County's first death. On May 1st, stay-at-home orders expired. Retail stores and restaurants welcomed customers back at limited capacity. The month ended, though, with large crowds for Memorial Day. Weeks later, Nueces County reported triple digits for the first time, with 109 cases on June 22nd. Basically focuses on where we think we know the spread of the virus will invade. I believe that it balances the health and safety of our citizens with the need to keep our economy open. That same day, Judge Canales issued a county-wide indoor mask order following Brooks and Claiborne counties, as well as the city of Port Aransas. That order went into effect June 26th, the same day Governor Abbott closed bars ahead of the 4th of July weekend with three hours notice. We cannot operate a business without some sort of plan. We don't operate a business without a plan. They shouldn't operate the government and control businesses without a plan. Also ahead of the 4th of July, Judge Canales closed New Oasis County beaches to vehicles. July was a brutal month. On the 13th, 35-year CCPD veteran Chuck Williams lost his battle with the virus. Chuck was raised here. He knows the neighborhoods. He knows people personally. And he went to 
great lengths to make sure he served as public as he should, as a public servant. So we are going to miss Chuck greatly. July 16th, New Oasis County reached its single day high in new cases without state data dumps at 605. August 2nd was the county's deadliest day when the virus claimed 13 lives. Since then, numbers have ebbed and flowed, but at the beginning of December, hope on the 15th, the Pfizer vaccine arrived at Christmas Bond. Having this vaccine just is truly a shot in the arm of positivity. Uh, to know that we are resilient, we have a future, and we look forward to that future in 2020. It's been a uh, rough year. But hopefully this vac these, these three vaccines will come put in place. And uh, I will keep you up to date as the developments hit. Moving on to New Year's. For those who have... For those who didn't realize I told you about this a few days ago, that fireworks were illegal in this, in here in New Oasis County. But there was... The fireworks incident that happened just over the Milan neighborhood. Listen. This comes despite the warnings from the city manager, Peter Zoni, and the Corpus Christi Police Department of Cracked Illegal Fireworks. But it was still a sleepless night because illegal fireworks in many Corpus Christi residents. And, uh, you can't be shooting off fireworks in the city limits. That's illegal, and you can be fined $2,000. But what is CCPD going to be doing about this? No one knows. But the comets, like this one, illegal. You know what's also illegal? The big holes in roadways that have corpus that can total a vehicle with just one hit. I get that. <gasps> okay. Coming up, why the team is calling on CC on CCISD to get back to to get back to virtual learning, and how you can make improvements to your health day this year. Love all that after this. Now, for those that are living in CCISD, the teachers here, Nancy Vela, says that the that she's calling on CCISD to go back to virtual learning on January 5th. Here's what she said. That's good news for Norman Reyes, but the educators, but who is who's in the first round? The nursing homes. Why shouldn't have been the educators not in the first round of vaccines? Well, they feel like they don't want to have to waste all the vaccine for waste the vaccine for all the teachers in every single place in New Oasis County. I think what should have happened should educators should have been first, just divide it up into two sections. Just divide it up. One for the teachers, one for the nursing home. Just divide it up in two batches. So that everyone can just get their share. And those shivers will not be coming in until like Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. But we all know that. And until that time comes, I will report it to you as needed. Health break now. What is the most important goal of everyone's New Year's tradition? Eating healthy, exactly. But how would you feel about starting? A, but how would you feel about starting to go on a diet during your New Year's? 
that's exactly what's going to be happening during this time. But how can you make improvements to your health meal? I'll Here's more Agaegos. That place a little more worrisome to your health as 2021 takes off. By the 2021 hits, how can you improve your diet for this year? Here's Channel 3's more Agaegos. She said, as the dietitian said, there are ways you can do, like exercising, eating, and eating high fiber diets, eating whole fruits and vegetables, oranges, apples. Just look at the food group. You got your protein, you got your dairy, you got your grains, your fruits, the vegetables. And even school lunches are doing the same thing to help out the kids. Less meat and cheese and more fruits and vegetables. When we come back and look back at our at all the stories we've done for this year and possibly and possibly all the other stories we've done for on our show. Well that in the minute, stay with us. Time for our, time for the updates. Welcome back. Now, looking back at our first episode, what we've done. Going back to our back to school week, which we've been talking about school lunches. There's a little preview. School lunches. So 28 to 95 million people served in the past few years with this month. Go on with some concern. Now to... What I've been, uh, the reason I want to do this topic is to, to tell parents and the students that you don't have, you don't need to go out of school to go get food outside. There's always options. If you eat lunch at home, you bring a lunch from home. That's how it happens. If you eat a lunch at home, if you eat at home, you bring lunch home in a lunch box. You don't get in your car, go get some McDonald's or whatever. It's a closed campus. That means students can are not allowed to leave campus during the school time.
Hey, you want to lie and say a friend got it for you? I mean, people like to say, Oh, school lunch is disgusting and all that. Well, yeah, I understand how you feel about the school lunch. It's disgusting. You want to see some bad things about it. But the cooks in there make a lot of money than you do. You can't really blame the school. Just blame the school lunch. Just try to blame the school lunch ladies and say, Hey, your food tastes disgusting. No offense to the school lunch ladies. I eat their lunch. Yep, it's the same stuff every week. I don't mind because I'm hungry. The school feeds a lot of children every day and few complaints. Sometimes they want to take them to the school board and say, hey, we need better nutrition. The main source of this is the salt. They don't add flavor to it. The whole reason why it is, you in, if you try you had something to school lunch, and if you got something to school lunch, they're probably going to look at you and say, what you add on there? It's just simple salt and pepper to make it taste good. And if you do that, you're going to be in trouble. They'll probably confiscate the salt and pepper. From you and Paul get you another lunch with no flavorings in it. So the bottom line I'm trying to get to you is, it's not okay for you guys to be getting, to be getting lunch from the outside. It's good to either eat the lunch, or just get a lunch from home. That's it. There's no reason for that to happen. It's just, it's just, it's not rock, it's not rocket science. It's just the simple facts, right? If you guys want to get lunch from the outside, go ahead. But you're going to get in trouble from the security people. They will come after you, and then the people outside will tell you you're not allowed to leave campus. The handbook's really clear, and kids who skip. Skip class to go get lunch. Like I get what you guys are trying to say here, but I don't care. You're here to go to school, you're here to learn, get your diploma, get your education, move on in your life. You're not here to look good, talk to your friends. Look cool, clown around, go out somewhere and get lunch. I mean, calling your parents up and uh, deliver lunch from them, get your delivery app services like DoorDash, Favor, all the other stuff. No, 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 no. That is a, a big problem here. I can't have that on my conscience. That's it for now. For me for that's it. That's it for this edition. Give me a break. Friday, go on Saturday. I'll see you guys on Monday, where we report on the school board's decision to talk to to enroll the new superintendent, Miss Garcia. Miss Garcia, will she will she be the new superintendent, or will Joe Kelly be the acting superintendent? Just wait. Have a good night, everyone. I'll see you guys on Monday, live from the outside the Fly Bluff School Administration Building. Good night.